Okay guys, welcome to the show today. Today we're going to be covering landing on runway 27 at Princess Juliana. Now we're starting out holding short of runway 10 at Walblake, identifier TQPF. The pilot is now going to taxi into position on runway 10 via back taxi runway 28. Once the pilot is in position, he will set up to do a normal departure by setting flaps for the appropriate takeoff. We will rev up to about 50%, make sure fuel pressure and oil pressure are good, then continue to full throttle and perform the departure. After liftoff, the pilot will raise the gear and continue to climb. When crossing 300 feet, the pilot will retract the flaps and continue towards the ocean. After reaching the shoreline, the pilot will begin to turn towards Princess Juliana International continuing their climb to about 1,500 feet, which is the clearance of the mountains where we'll need to pass. For the sake of time, I have skipped ahead to where the pilot is now flying perpendicular on what would be a right base leg for runway 27 at Princess Juliana. If you were listening, you will notice that the pilot just decreased engine power. This is done early because the pilot wants to be as slow as possible while crossing the mountains without stalling. Since after the mountains we will have to do a steep descent, we do not want to come in fast for this approach. Now the pilot is starting to turn to line up with runway 27. As you can see, the pilot is constantly checking outside since he does not have a direct visual on runway 27. For now, we are going to use the cove as our landmark since as a departure from 9 in Princess Juliana, you would fly in this general direction.
now, as you can see, the pilot overshot his turn, possibly due to visibility restrictions from the covering mountain. As the pilot continues his approach path, he is having to make very erotic turns and corrections as he starts to gain some visibility of runway 27. Now the pilot is approaching his lapse obstacle in his approach. He must clear this mountain and then make a very steep descent to land on 27. The pilot is decreasing the throttle and adding flaps to get the plane in landing configuration as soon as possible. Again, the pilot is forced to make rough corrections to line up with the runway. As the pilot crosses the last mountain, he will lower the gear and add the rest of the flaps. He will now begin his steep descent trying to control his speed, keeping it low enough for a safe landing. For the circle to land runway 27 approach, the pilot simply starts by doing a straight in approach for Niner, except offset to the left or right. In this case we have chosen to the right since it is the least populated of the two. When the pilot is around the midfield downwind area, he will start to set up the plane for landing. We will start by adding flaps and beginning to slow down to approach speed. Now, as the pilot begins to get closer to the mountains at the end of runway 27, he will start to turn in on a modified left base for runway 27, hugging the mountains as close as possible. At this point, we will continue to set up the landing configuration by adding gear and the rest of the flaps. As you can see, you are in very close proximity to the water and the mountains, leaving you very little room if you make a mistake. Also, you must be very careful not to come in too low, or you can end up stalling and crashing into the water or falling short of the runway. When flying online, many people try to avoid the runway 27 approach at Princess Juliana if possible. For today's viewer challenge, I would like to see how you would do the approach to runway 27. You can use either of the methods shown in the video or your own. Also feel free to use any aircraft you would like, although I must say smaller aircraft are better. If you want to try doing it in a 747, go for it. Post it as a video response and remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.